Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The summary and peace out to the rest of you. This is Blackheart signing Black in again, asking you to hit that share button first before the like or the subscribe button because uh, the message is more important than the messenger. And this message is regarding uh, somebody that we should support. And I'm asking you to check this channel out and to subscribe and benefit, especially if you are black and you are Muslim. His name is Bilal Abdullah. It's Bilal, B-I-L-A-L, and that's his YouTube name as, as well, B-I-L-A-L space Abdullah, A-B-D-U-L-L-A-H. So check out his page. And um, the reason is that I explained before, but I didn't explain it exclusively, how in fact Islam is the solution for our people. That's not something that I want to force because you can't. If, if you have to force someone to believe it, then they don't really believe it. They're not convinced. But I did want to get the message out. And I will be doing this in future messages. Some messages will be about the community. Some are going to have a religious bend to them. I'll put whichever one is the case in the title so that you know what, what it is before you click on it and open it to be fair to you. But I am going to say this. Um, we ain't going nowhere without our creator and his approval. We ain't going to sing and dance our way to freedom. And we're not going to plead and beg our way to freedom either. That ain't going to happen. For what we need to do to get free, we're going to need all the help we can get from the one that's actually controlling the universe. And many could say, well, if he's controlling the universe, how come he ain't on our side? Well, Again, like I said, Islam is the solution, and many of us are rejecting anything that requires self-discipline, let alone Islam, because we don't want to exercise any of that discipline. We want to do what we want to do. Everyone wants to do what they want to do. However, we have decided that we will do what we want to do and that we will not do anything that goes against that, even if it's right. That's where the mistake comes in. God. Allah will change the condition of a people when they change what is in themselves. And what is in us is nigger stubbornness. And I know this because when I was 13 and I tried to preach black liberation to us, I don't care what the age was. I'm not accepting age as an excuse. Niggas didn't want to hear it. And that's why I'm using the word niggas right now. Niggas wanted to stunt in the school, in the hallways in front of everybody else with fresh kicks and fresh threads. And that was more important than freeing your mind from brainwashing. Niggas wanted to chase the light-skinned chick. The women wanted to chase the guy that could slam dunk or that could score touchdowns. That was it. Niggas were living for a social dream that was never going to come. Why? Because niggas don't approve of other niggas. So you can't get peer group approval. There's peer group pressure, there's peer group rejection, but there's no such thing with black folks or with Western people in general as peer group acceptance when you're a teenager because nobody's good enough. No one's clothes are good enough. Because to be accepted by a peer group, you have to be a bunch of mutually exclusive things to begin with. I mean, how you going to be a good student and be dumb at the same time? Them two are mutually exclusive, right? <laughs> but that's what you got to be. You got to be a dumbass nigga, but you, you, but you got to be a good enough student to where you can at least stay in the same grade level as all your homies and all your friends. But if you as dumb as they want you to be, you're going to fail and they're going to leave you behind. That, that right there is the beginning of all the mutual exclusivity. And I'm going to tell you, I don't accept age as an excuse. Well, I was young, I didn't know, you know, I just wanted to, I don't give a guck, nigga, I'm talking about freedom. I'm talking about mental freedom that would lead to a physical freedom. And if you can't shake the brainwashing off to the point that you are willing to get your behind to a black nation at some point in your life, form some kind of plan and try to carry it out, then nigga, you ain't ready to be free. I gave up childhood behind this trying to free other black folks' minds from being niggas into being Africans. And look what I got for it. No childhood. So I will say this, though. As I got older, brothers became more understanding, but sisters really didn't. And I'm not going to overlook that either. 
but I'm not the only one. Again, others had to go through the same thing. And I came to understand late in life, I, relatively late at 25, that the solutions actually lied in Islam the whole time. The solutions were there. But you see, the Arab can't tell you this when they tell you about Islam. The Afghan and the Indian can't tell you this when they tell you about Islam because to them it is something that they simply inherited from their parents. But they can see how it works in their own lives. They can tell you that for you and your people and what you're facing, this is also a solution, which is why I mean if you don't believe it when I tell you. But Bilal Abdullah can tell you as an African American why it is and how it is a solution for us, the solution. Actually, the comprehensive set of solutions for us. Whatever cannot be solved after it's been done can be prevented from being done again. That's what it is. You ain't going to live a paradise in this life that, okay, true, you're not going to. But what went, what went wrong before now has an answer to it. So, that being said, I want y'all to go to his channel. And check it out, especially if you're Muslim. If you're curious to know how it could be the solution, and he's still dropping videos, so you can hear more and more over time. Don't just go today and say, oh, I ain't learned nothing. No, subscribe, and then when the next one comes out, you'll be able to check it out. But I also want to tell y'all something else. In the future, I, like I said, I'm going to record uh, some things only about the community and other things about the religion and the community, but I'll put in the title which one it is. Well, I'll put it in, as a hashtag, Islam, if it's got religion in it. But what I also want to point out is this. I recorded three videos back to back about Jason Roger Pope, DJ AIDS. And uh, the first one was what he revealed to Eidos about Eidos. And that one got thousands of views, 2,000 more, 2,000 plus. The third one was about uh, the treachery involved in that, and that one got 2,000 views. The middle one, the second one, was about um, how Islam could have been a prevention for this, and that one got 400. At the end of the day, it comes down to this. You're not interested as a whole, as a community. And I don't gain anything if you all do become interested and you say, you know what, I want to be Muslim, and I want to be Muslim, and I and he and she, and we all want to go ahead and accept it. I gain nothing. What I want you to understand is that I gain nothing from this, nothing at all, at least not in this life. Yet and still, you saw something that required discipline. It would have been the same if you saw Judaism or Christianity. You saw something that required discipline and a way to live that doesn't just simply job with everything you want to do. And you said, I'm going to pass on this. Some of you really think that it can't be a solution because the Arabs this and the Arabs that and the Pakistanis and the Indians and the Afghans this and that and their colorism. Some of you really believe it, but even if I tell you that that's not the case and I show you how you can find it out, you still, many of you are still going to be left behind saying, yeah, but you know what? I want my liquor and my ham, ham hocks and my pork chops and my bacon. And I want to stun on the club on Friday and Saturday night. And I want to run through these bitches. And some of you women are just like, I want to run through these niggas. And I don't want to have to listen to no man either, even though I do want to take their money. I don't want to have to listen to no man. That's really what it comes down to. There's a level of self-discipline many of you don't want to exercise. Some of you are really just convinced. But there are others of you that if you were convinced or if you were not, you still at the end are going to reject any kind of medicine because it requires self-discipline. You're going to look at you, the same people who look at your stomachs and you say, I need to lose this. I don't like it. But you ain't going to uh, practice the self-discipline to go and walk regularly and to watch what you eat most days out the week, even though you could cheat about two days out the week and still lose weight. You ain't going to do it because you want to look at what you want to eat every day out the week. And not exercise any day out the week. But you want that gut to disappear. I'm going to tell you what that has to do with everything while I'm recording this. I want you to realize that my reason for caring about the community and still talking about the, the community to a certain extent and mostly the family and the gender relations within the community. The reason is because I hate the oppressor 
who started this problem more than I love you ignorant ass niggas. What it really comes down to. And I do love black folks. Don't get me wrong, enough, I love us enough, but a lot of us are still in that ignorant ass nigga stage. We haven't gone to the black stage, let alone the African stage. And it's because of choices that you have made. And I'm all for individual accountability when we're talking to each other. I don't wanna hear that mess coming from nobody else, and I don't wanna hear it from anybody black in front of white folks. But when, we, when it's just us in the room, I'm all for us dealing with that as well as admitting or blaming Massa for what they started. Spread the blame around. I'm all for that. But I hate the oppressor more than I love us because you don't love yourself that much. Many of us don't. If a 13 year old is trying to preach black liberation, the community should welcome that and fuck the shuck up and listen. Instead of saying he just 13, he don't know nothing. He got more sense than a lot of you ignorant ass niggas in your 30s. I want to stun on the club from Friday and Saturday night. It's my money, I'm earning my own living. You know what, the 13 year old, if he's preaching that, he's telling the truth. Stunting the club, what's that gonna do for you? What's that liquor gonna do for you except take a lot of your money and dehydrate you and mess your health up? What's the weed going to do for you? Hell, even the swine, what is that going to do for you other than cost you money and then put parasites in your stomach? Because they can't kill it. Shahrazad Ali was right about that because doctors confirmed what she said before and after she said it. There will always be some parasites in pork. You're going to get it. If you eat pork or if you eat sushi, you will guaranteed you will have some worms in your stomach. They will be moving around and an endoscopy will show that. Guaranteed. Doctors will tell you this. So that being said, what are these things going to do for you that you, ha you love so much that you would not consider a path of discipline that requires you give these things up, even though it would lead you to a God that finally would be on your side because you're on his side and then both of you can be against the oppressors together. I talk about repatriation. No, man, I don't want to hear that. We built this plantation. I understand that. But sometimes you got to run away from a plantation in order to regroup and then come back and take it over. That's what I was talking about. What did you niggas say? See, when we talk black liberation, many of you don't even want to listen while somebody finishes the sentence before you start to respond. And therein lies the problem. There is the solution and you don't want to hear it because it doesn't involve drinking and fornication and it does involve you having to fuck the shuck up sometimes and listen to someone even if they're younger than you tell you something that you don't want to hear. And you immediately take it like it's some personal insult. How you gonna tell me anything? Sometimes a younger person is right and the elder is wrong and we're seeing a lot of that these days. But the elders don't want to fuck the shuck up. And that, that's, that really happens in our community. It was like that in the Arab uh, community 1,400 years ago. Our children cannot be our teachers. A lot of them old Arabs died worshiping idols while their kids said, you know what? No. These idols can't be God. This was quite common, actually. Ibrahim... Abraham, peace be to him, had an uncle that manufactured idols. It was his uncle or his dad. Whoever that man was that raised him manufactured idols. You understand? Took this boy in, but manufactured idols. And eventually, Abraham said, you know what? These idols cannot be our gods. It's impossible. So, now what? He went one day when everybody was at a festival, he stayed behind and he smashed the idols except for the biggest one. And he put the ax and rested it on the shoulder of the biggest idol. And they asked later who destroyed these gods. And he said, why don't you ask them who did this? And they said, you know, they don't speak. And then he said, if they cannot speak, then why are they your gods in the first place? If they can't even show you any particular way, why are they your gods? Abraham was right. And his people, including the elders, were wrong, end of story. And they threw him into a pit of fire for it. But God saved him from it. 
And this is in uh, the Bible and in the Quran. There was, um, it, look, they call them Abrahamic faiths to this day. Abraham listened to his elders when they were right, but he disobeyed them when they were wrong. And many of you want to try to pull this age card at the wrong time. Now, th that does mean that you're going to know certain things about certain things. But when it comes to this, human salvation, no, God did not give you old niggas. He didn't give us old niggas because I'm one of you a monopoly on wisdom and when it comes to that. He didn't even give us a monopoly on experience. He just gave us more of it. But they're going to be young folks that are going to have experience with things we don't know. Young people are not just to be called upon when we have to do something on a computer and we don't know how to do it. But that's what we do. Because we old folks like to treat these young niggas the exact same way that a bunch of young immature women treated us when we were growing up and we didn't like it. We ain't good for nothing until they need to do something that they don't know how to do, but we do because we paid attention and studied. Oh, so she ain't going to give us no respect of which the pussy is a token, if I can speak freely, but she's going to call us when she needs something. But that's how you act a lot. I'm sorry. That's how a lot of us act when it comes to these young cats. Oh, your experience don't count. No, nigga, it does. If they're lying, it doesn't count. If it's a one off, it doesn't count. But if this is a pattern that they can identify and this is not a young person that we know to be lying, we should fuck the shuck up and listen to then respond. We don't even do that. And this is part of why it is that every generation goes through the same thing. They have to go through this ignorant ass nigga teenage phase that other races of teenagers don't seem to have to go through as bad unless they grew up in the West. Then they grow up and mature, but it's too goddamn late for the people, for the community. At what point are the babes going to be allowed to be wise before they become teenagers? I don't know, but I can tell you now. If God is mad at us and he has every right to be, he must hate the oppressors. And that is the only reason that I still try to preach black liberation to us, starting with repatriation. Because frankly, if you ignorant ass niggas don't want it, if you want to sit up here and shun forms of self-discipline because they're forms of self-discipline, then I'm going to look and say, well, uh, as long as God punishes them white folks too, I don't care what he does to you anymore. I'm going to get to that point eventually. You niggas keep pushing though. And I'm not talking about most of you under the sound of my voice either, really. It's not really most of you doing that. But the, what you, most of you who can hear this know someone who is, and I, I, what I'm asking is that you share this with them so they hear it. You know some ignorant country ass nigga that won't listen to nothing you got to say if it's positive. But the minute you start talking about drinking, smoking, and stunting on these hoes at the club, they listen and they all ears. You should forward this to them. If you can do it anonymously, that's even better. Because they know who the hell they are. And there's no reason that these niggas should be allowed to go with the rest of us if we do decide we're going to move, go over here, build a new black community free of niggas. And if, if, I, if any of our offspring turn out to be niggas, we're going to send them back to that nigger community we had to leave behind. They know who they are. They know, are they black or are they niggas? They understand. Send it to them. They know, they know that they're one of, that they belong in that category. Let them have it. That being said, I appreciate you listening. Please go to Bilal Abdullah's channel. Um, show that man a support and subscribe because there's a lot you can learn whether, you, whether you're black or Muslim let alone if you're both and as a matter of fact if he drops stuff frequently enough I might be able to uh, deal with the community or, or talk about community issues and leave, uh, leave most of the religious talks to him I may be able to do it not that I want to but I would have that option but I'm going to tell you now, you want to know what you want, a comprehensive solution? There it is right there. It's exactly what many of you were told by some really super Afrocentric conscious Negroes was not the solution. There it is. They just didn't know it was a solution because uh, Mr. Arab and Mr. Pakistani and Mr. Indian and Mr. Afghan didn't know because they don't care about black liberation. 
they don't have a resistance to white supremacy, whereas you and I have a resistance. So they're holding on to the solution, but they gave up the resistance to white supremacy part or the resistance to oppressors, period. We have the resistance to oppression, but we don't have the theological part of it. We don't have the revelation from the deity that also hates oppressors the same way we do. He's just given us time to get ourselves of a free mind or a mind that also hates oppressors in general the way he does instead of strictly hating the ones who oppressed us. He's just waiting on us to come to a mind that loves wisdom, which is the mind of a Muslim. And many of us are not of that mind yet. We don't even understand it. If a young person seems to love wisdom, we don't even understand why they would. We would say, well, you're young. Why, do, why are you worried about this? You need to go ahead and, and just be young. What we're really saying is be a dumbass fool so we can feel better about being wise at our age and in our advanced age. That's all. We want to act like we got a monopoly on wisdom. No, when you see someone young in our community that loves wisdom and liberation, cultivate that. Not only that, but frankly, separate these young folks from each other a lot of times. Because when do we lose control over them? In the classrooms. When does this happen? In middle school. What part of middle school? Usually it's the seventh grade. And that is also when the class sizes go from smaller to larger. Then you got a whole bunch of uh, uh, seventh graders in a classroom with one teacher. And they've also been socialized. And that's the point in their development where the, where the evil negative socialization really takes root and takes hold. It's when they go into that seventh grade year. And that's when we lose a lot of them because the system was designed that way. And whenever they start to care about wisdom, we say, you too young to worry about that. You need to stop trying to act like you so old. You ain't but seventh grade. We need to stop sending the mixed messages. And again, that's not something that a Muslim should be doing anyway. But I've beaten this dead horse enough. You get the point. I hope that this has been a benefit. Black horse sign and blackout. Assalamu alaikum.